And he just kept trying to say, hey, well, we're going to sell you candy. You can't be here to sell candy and stuff. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, we know that. Uh, well, you're a defenders. Oh, okay, so what's your point? Right. Thanks for coming out, guys. Sorry to take you away from everything else, but this is getting ridiculous. My guys are feeling very threatened. You're going to arrest me right now? Said you're being detained, sir. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't Put do that. You can't do that. On the afternoon of March 27th, 2024, when Pinellas County Sheriff's deputies respond to a call alleging disorderly conduct in the Palace Mobile Home Park, they're greeted by the complainant, Charles. We'll take pictures of everybody while they're going through, offering to buy candy bars. We're going to sell you candy bars. I told him he doesn't have the right Do to Do you know these covered. guys? No. No idea who they are? No idea who they were other than they came in here and wanted to tell everybody candy bars and, and stuff like that. Charles Miljarek, a repeat <laughs> offender and the manager of this park, was found guilty and convicted for the possession of a picture showing the performance of a child and for lewd computer solicitation of a child. But a case that really dominates his criminal history has a closer connection with selling candy bars than one might expect, a subject that he is passionately complaining about right now. More about this later. The person Charles is complaining about is Tyler Oliveira, a popular YouTuber who has amassed over 6 million subscribers on YouTube. Tyler's investigative videos have earned him immense popularity. In 2023, Tyler was even featured on Fox News for his profile on Miracle Village, a community in Palm Beach County, Florida that's also home to a large population of offenders. On the morning of March 27, 2024, when Tyler Oliveira visits this trailer park to make yet another viral video, Things take a horrible turn in a direction nobody could have anticipated. And they seem like they were under the influence or anything? No, nope, not under the influence, just being rude, obnoxious people. Yeah. And did you notice them like on a public street? Were they actually knocking on doors? No, like, they were go driving around, approaching everybody that's living in here, sitting here. And then they were knocking on a few doors on the back road here. When I called them, they were knocking on doors. As this case progresses, two other residents from this trailer park will play a prominent role along with Charles. The man in the red shirt, William Fury, is a repeat offender who has emerged as a public face of the mobile home park in recent years. He's been charged with criminal mischief, performing a lewd act in the presence of a child, battery, and failing to register as a offender. In a 2014 documentary titled Pervert Park, Fury explained that he got in trouble when his girlfriend's 12-year-old daughter came into his room to model underwear at which point he gratified himself in front of her. The quiet man in the corner is Kenneth William Sermon, another one who made it on the sex offender registry on the charges of lewd behavior in the presence of a child. Were they trying to sell candy or were they giving out candy? Sell candy. Okay, anything in particular? Was it just like out random chocolate stuff? Bars, that's chocolate bars. Chocolate bars out of the grocery bag? said it was a bar or something. Okay. Did it seem legitimate? Like, you know what no, I mean? Like Girl Scout no. cookie type thing? So it just no. seemed more along the lines of them just trying to get you worked out. Yeah. If it's not clear why someone would want to disturb the residents of the park under the guise of selling candy, what Charles says next to Deputy Kowalski may help shed some light on this unusual situation. You made contact with him and what happened? And he just kept trying to say, hey, well, we're going to sell you candy. I said, you're not, you know, like on the phone, I was saying, you know, it's wrong. You can't be here to sell candy and stuff. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, we know that. Uh, well, you're a defenders. Oh, OK, so what's your point? Right. Indeed, this isn't just about Charles, but a reality of every resident of the mobile home park as a whole. Starting in 2007, a group called Florida Justice Transitions has largely operated the park to provide housing to people who were on the sex offender list. Palace Mobile Home Park was often frequented by visitors who were curious to find out more about it. Charles tells the police that he has caught just such a person on video. Cops are already on the way. Are you a sex offender? Are you? Yes, sir. Well, then get out of this car. My property. You don't have rights to come in here and sell stuff. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. Hi. 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 I already turned you over to the sheriff. Thank you very much. You turned me over to the sheriff? Yes, you're on property. Can you turned yes, me over to the sheriff. And you, sir. Sure. How you doing? Would you like to move Mr. Beast Park? Okay. What was that last thing that was said? I, yeah. I started talking about you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Would you like to move Mr. Beast Park? Okay. Yeah, no, that was the last thing that I cut my phone. Okay. Stupid phones cut off. No worries. So but the other guy in the car just kept taking pictures the whole time. Yeah. It's wrong to come in here and attack the guys like this. Have they never? They've never, never been seen here before. before. Okay. Hmm. As Charles continues to bring the officer up to speed from the events of the day, he further clarifies why the residents made note of this particular visitor. 
which kind of scares the residents a lot when you got people coming through doing that, taking pictures and all that stuff of them. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Then, why they were taking the pictures for, I have no idea. Yeah, the, the thing with pictures is that if you're on a public street, public roadway, even like your backyard, if it's not I totally that, enclosed yeah. and there's some expectation of privacy there, then you're open to take photos, right? Like if you're in a dressing room, a bathroom, oh, you know, why, your, why your own residence, that, then you yeah. have some expectation of privacy. So if someone goes out of their way to take video of you there, now you have an issue. So yeah. would you like me to do a report for you or do you want to just give us a call if they come back? What do you think? Better to have the report. I don't so give legal. Back. I'm not allowed to give legal advice. Oh, you're no. the you're the reporting party. Uh, you're the one that. Uh, um, it's it's do you want it documented? Or yes, not? I would love it documented. Yeah. Okay. Deputy Kowalski agrees to file an official report, which will make it easier to identify a pattern if the candy salesman should return, and he must respond to a repeat call, a scenario that will play out sooner than he likely imagines. So the white male, you said six foot tall. Yeah. Age. I'd say right around 30-ish. Anything else you can tell about him? Do you have an accent, anything like that? No, just normal. Just kept trying to push the candy bars and then okay. kept telling, you know, well, you're all offended anyway, you know, all that stuff. Right. It had nothing to do with selling candy bars, but then again, you have legal rights to sell candy bars, but hey, you know, whatever. Right. There may be little criminal activity for Deputy Kowalski to record today, but he's right back at the Palace Mobile Home Park the next morning. The residents have called again, but this time, the subject of their complaints is still around when police arrive. It doesn't take long for things to go south. How are you? Hey, buddy. So what's going on? Journalist, I've chat shop here. Trying to talk to the guys a little bit. So you were out here yesterday trying to sell them candy bars, right? Uh, allegedly. Allegedly, I, I had you on you video. Do. Yeah? Yeah. I suppose that may be tested in the court of law. Okay. But, so uh, what are we doing out here today? We're really just trying to chat. Chat with who? Uh, some of the uh, residents here. Why? Uh, just out of curiosity. Curiosity of what? See what led them here. You got some idea on your bud? Uh, no. What's your first name? Um, I'd prefer not to give it to you. Okay, well, you're out here harassing these guys because you're out here doing the same thing yesterday, trying to sell them candy. Well, soliciting and harassment. It's clear from the outset that the young man with the microphone is not impressed with the deputy's authority, and it's only a matter of seconds before Kowalski decides to find another way to gain control of the situation. I was trying to sell some candy bars. Mr. Peace bars? Yeah, you can buy them in any store. It's not like you're a girl scout going around anything like that. You're obviously well, here to do Boy something scouts, reason, sell some just- Speaking of Boy Scouts, in 1989, The park's manager, Charles, was placed in the Boy Scouts' perversion files after he was convicted of in the second and third degree. Charles was prohibited from having contact with boys and girls under the age of 17 after he regularly two members of the Boy Scouts. This was just the tip of the iceberg, and the Boy Scouts suspected there were more victims. In an affidavit, Charles said, quote, I've been affectionate with other children and have hugged, touched, and kissed them, but I never had with any of them. I also have never forced anybody to have with me. Charles was sentenced to only six months imprisonment and five years probation. Just trying to get like some news on social media. So do you have some idea or do you want to get detained for obstruction? I mean, you can detain me, but am I under arrest? And if so, for what charges? Harassment. You're going to arrest me right now? Said you're being detained, sir. Whoa, 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 You can't do that. You can't do that. Are you going to identify question. yourself or not? Okay, I'm on public property. Are you going to identify you can't, yes, you can't yes, strong yourself, yes or no? We're going to court over this if you want. Are you going to go ID There's yourself, yes or no? I can ID myself. You got to okay. let go of the arm, though. You're going to ID yourself, sure. yes or no? I'll ID myself. Okay. You got to let go of the arm. It's in my pocket. Which pocket? My right pocket. Okay. Okay. Get your ID. Okay, let's not strong arm, though. Then let's not play games. Okay, I won't play games, but you can't You can't do that. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. When you're harassing people and committing a crime, I can detain you. Deputy Kowalski's interactions with the young man on the sidewalk are certainly a marked contrast with how he acts with Charles and the other residents. This guy's a real... Yeah, he's just trying to push the waters for likes and views. Might be a sovereign citizen, but it's most likely just social media. That's why he's got the microphone with his his camera. I still don't get that whole sovereign citizen... I don't know. Like I said, there's that, and then they do the cop cop audits or whatever, and so they're just trying to catch us slipping up, and then that way they can get a lawsuit. And they also get likes and views because there's plenty of people out there that don't like law enforcement, so it is what it is. You know, we've got enough damn problems around here without this crap. No, no, no. We've got 180 for now, Deputy Kowalski's main concern is getting an ID from the man on the sidewalk. Okay, I'll be honest, it's actually in the car. It's in the car? It's in the car. Okay, what's your name? Tyler. 
Uh, you can take my name. It's public. It's Tyler Oliveira. Can I get your badge number? Yes, sir. What's your middle name, Tyler? It's Officer Kowalski. Why are you strong arming me? What's your last name? A fire here. What's your name? Uh, Oliveira. O L I V E I R A. Tyler Oliveira. Officer, why do you think it was warranted to uh, strong arm me just now? What's your date of birth? Don't let these guys know. What's a good address for you? Uh, I prefer not to say. What's a good address for you? Uh, I don't want them to know. Can I say it to you in confidence? Okay. Can I give it to you in confidence? What's a good number for you? Um. Ah, uh, I really gotta get my phone number. Genuine questions. What will that be used for? What's your phone number? Oh, sorry, help me out here. What's your phone number? All right. All right. Ready? Tyler reluctantly gives his identifying information to Deputy Kowalski before questioning why he's being detained in the first place. But I'm on public property right now. You're on public property right now, but you're still bugging the same gentleman that you were bugging yesterday. I didn't mean to. He came to me. He came to you? Yes, sir. Not in me, but to me. Yes, sir. Okay. So why are we out here? Genuine curiosity, but it seems like... The curiosity of what? How the individuals got here, how life has been, etc. Like there's uh, bigger things to handle here, perhaps? Stay right here. You're not free to go. Tyler remains detained as Deputy Kowalski goes to collect more information from the complainants. Again, the contrast in the deputy's demeanor is remarkable. Charles, so what's going on today, man? Well, you see what this guy is doing. Did he come on the property today? Oh, yeah, both him and his buddy were both on the property. Where's right the now. buddy at? He walked down the sidewalk. Oh, wait a minute. Charles and his friends claim to have spotted Tyler's colleague waiting across the street at the gas station. Leaving him aside for the time being, Deputy Kowalski tries to gather more information about the day's events. Charles, your manager of the property? Yes, sir. Okay, and he was just on here? Yes, sir. Today? Yeah. What was he doing on the property today? Same thing he was doing yesterday, going around door to door talking to people about being Offenders and you know, if the public don't want you here, and all this and that. At least, and he's not selling candy today. His glasses are filming people as he goes. He's asking them what? Uh, you know, questions like your offender, and you know, the public don't want you here. Uh, the schools in the neighborhood don't want you here. Things like that. Daddy must be proud of how his college money's being spent. Oh yeah. The irony of that comment is not lost on anyone, and one can only wonder how proud his father feels about his crimes. How many times did you communicate to him that you didn't want him here? At least 37 times in the last 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Every step he took. Every step. Get off the property and ask us to speak. So is he staying on the sidewalk at that point? Or no, he's no. back in. Into the whole park. Okay. I tell him to leave and stand on the sidewalk. As soon as we turn our back, he start following us back in the park with his cameras. He's at I'm sorry, my corp was right here when I started it out. It's almost comical that child predators sit in judgment of someone else's conduct and behavior. Backup is on the scene, and because Deputy Kowalski anticipates what Tyler is going to tell his corporal first, he's quick to beat him to the punch. Well, it's the same guy from yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, I grabbed his arm. He didn't want to identify himself. He wants to sit here and play these games. Does so. he want to leave? Yeah. So he, he didn't want to ID himself, so I was going to tell him. Is his car still in here? I'm not sure. Today he's walking around there telling me they don't want him here. He's just going door to door okay. and uh, things like Is there any management here or do we have trespass authorization? Yes. Uh, is it trespass been issued? Not yet. Okay. Let's get into that. But I, I was going to go. Uh, do you want to go harass me out or do we need more than this? Is he harassing? He's just going door to door. He's not. Talking to people. He's going. Yeah, it's not direct. So I think it's more 48. All right, you want to issue a warning? Yeah. Having gotten the scoop, the corporal has a chat with Tyler, choosing a lighter approach than the one favored by Deputy Kowalski. Listen, it's on you, man. Do yeah. you want to give your name? I hear he forced me to give it to him. Oh, it doesn't do you have me. it? Okay, then, then you're you trespassed from the property. Sure. sure. All right. Texas. Okay. Right. I mean, you got the body cam. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're free. Well, I got you in 4K, too. This gentleman has something to say. What's here? Manager of the park. From now on, you are not allowed in this park. Thank you, sir. Okay. Property line, or you or anybody representing you. Property line is the sidewalk. You're not coming this part, but we'll have you arrested. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Would you like the handshake? No. No? Where's have your... a good day. Listen, are you parked across the street? Potentially. Okay. Yes, so just use the sidewalk. That's yes, all. sir. And the crosswalk down here or down here, okay? Sure. All right. You're free to go. All right. Not being detained? Nope. Walski, any last thoughts? Come on, Dex. 
the arm grab essential. So where do I find your videos? He already has my name. I'm, I, I saw it yesterday, so I saw you out here. Ah, South yes, sir. It's all good. I'm trying to raise money. Well. <laughs> The frost between Tyler and the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office has thawed somewhat with the arrival of the corporal, but back with the mobile home park residence, Deputy Kowalski is all business. How long did this go on for today, Charles? Well, he's been in here for a good hour. Over an hour. Yeah, so you overheard me and corporal talking about harassment because it's general and it's not specific to one person that we really can't go that route, so it's just more trespass if he comes back. The other guy, we didn't issue him a trespass warning, so his friend comes back, we didn't issue him a trespass past morning at that time, but today it's just him. Um, so if he comes on the property, he stays, walks on that line on the sidewalk, he's fine. But as soon as he crosses the property line, then that's when he's in trouble. So just pull out your camcorder, whatever, your phone, and then just record him. If he's on the property, we can at least refer charges to the state. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming out, guys. Sorry to take you away from everything else, but this is getting ridiculous. My guys are feeling very threatened, uh, yes, especially you. yesterday with the candy bars. On May 14, 2024, less than two months later, Charles will be arrested on a charge of simple battery in an unrelated incident. This, of course, isn't the first time he's been in trouble with the law. And yet, a lesser-known fact is that Charles feels threatened by a YouTuber and candy bars. That leaves only Tyler and the corporal, who wants to know more about the YouTuber's intentions. Can I just ask, like, what, with the purpose, like, I know that this has a, a known persona. Well, exactly. I don't know if it's persona. I think we can look it up on the register. Right. With that right. being said, I mean... Are you doing like an investigative thing? Or are yeah, you we're doing... trying to just knock and talk. Yeah, I mean, they well, don't want the chocolate bars. Unlike Kowalski, the corporal keeps it professional with both sides of the issue and de-escalates the situation. Well, you can kind of understand why they didn't want somebody walking through just questioning sure. everybody. Right? Yeah, Sticking a microphone in the face. Well, the microphone was pretty discreet. I saw it. The de-escalation of uh, the conversation of us. Just don't come back on the property. I won't come back. Don't send anybody else. I'm not sending anybody else. I'm done. That is a uh, verbal promise in 4K. Uh, Tyler Oliveira or whatever. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is it YouTube? YouTube. Uh, maybe, man. I don't know. Maybe so. All right. I mean, uh, genuinely, I feel like we try to give an honest shake and well, just hear the story and we're listen, just a little curious. I understand. Yeah. But your curiosity did, you know, fell on deaf ears and they don't want That's to be out here. So. But I cool. was getting a little shysty. Well, I don't know any about that. I'll, I'll look into that. He's got body cam on, so. Oh, he does. Okay. All I right. mean, I got the whole thing on camera. Tyler. Yeah. Are you going to hang out here? No, I'm out. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. Take you. care. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Tyler leaves with a mandate to stay on the sidewalks and off the property, a piece of advice that the youth of St. Petersburg have perhaps heard from their parents. That's especially likely in the case of children who attend the local daycare or go to the nearby middle school, both of which are located less than half a mile away from the trailer park. As for Tyler Oliveira, he posted his investigation of Palace Mobile Home Park on April 7, 2024, just 11 short days after the incident. In the video, Tyler said, quote, I posed zero threat or intent to harm Arm, and dog is out here getting physical. He called on Pinellas County officials to fire Officer Kowalski.